Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm so glad you came over to our channel today. And if you are new to my channel, I want to introduce myself. My name is Teresa. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can transform an old piano bench. I'm also going to show you how we can make some really cute pumpkins with some things hopefully you may already have on hand around the house. And I'm also going to show you some yard, a couple of yard sale flips. I'm going to transform them and make them into some decor for my home. And also, stay to the end of the video because I'm going to stage everything for you. And also, in this video, I'm having a fun collab with one of my good friends. So I hope you'll enjoy the video. hope you get lots of inspiration for your home. If you haven't joined my Facebook Home Decor page, I'd love for you to go over and join it. And also, go over and follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love for you to. And also, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. Thanks so much. Okay, y'all, let's get started. Project number one is going to be a wooden box that I obtained from a barn sale and I paid two dollars for it. Y'all may have already seen this in a previous video I did where I showed y'all how to stage it in its natural state. I was going to leave it brown because it has a lot of character. It's got that worn look. You know, you can tell it's old. And, um, but I decided now I do want to paint it and I want to add a stencil. My daughter is having an outdoor wedding come up in September, the middle of September. So I'm trying to do things that I can incorporate maybe into her wedding, into her reception venue. And also, you know, I can bring it back home and add it into my decor and to give it more of a, a neutral look. So I'm going to chalk paint it with some linen white. And I went over it with my, my candle wax and I'm going to be able to distress it with my plastic scraper. So I'm going to go over it and give it a couple of coats. I went over it with a sanding block just to smooth it out some, just to make sure it didn't have any rough spots. And then I'm going to show you how cute it is to add just some more vintage detail to it by adding a stencil. Now y'all know I love stencils and I have all the stencils that I use in my videos. I have them linked in my Amazon store under the stencil um, category. But this one, I'm going to use part of it. Um, this is a newer stencil for me. I've used it on several projects, but I love this one. And I'm going to use it on a, another project here in just a minute. So you'll see, you know, this is one now one of my favorite stencils. But I'm just going to use part of it that would fit on the front of that box. And I'm going over it with my Waverly black ink chalk paint and y'all see what that just added to that box so now i can stage it and show y'all the cute things we can do with it okay moving along to project number two and it's going to be this beautiful piano bench now i acquired this from a church fundraiser yard sale and it was the first thing i saw when i walked up to the yard sale it was five dollars so i grabbed it up this little piano bench has so much potential now you can see we're going to have to fix a couple of things Things on it but we're gonna go through we wipe it down really good and clean it up we're gonna add some pretty paint to it I'm gonna show you a couple ways of how we can add some stencils to it and how you can stage it there's so many ways you can stage this little piano bench so I've got Ben helping me today he's gonna just add some wood glue to that little area he clamped it down and we'll let that dry and that'll fix that now he's gonna go over it with three coats of paint we start out with the first two layers I'm using that farmhouse paint that I purchased at Stevens Antiques. He sells this in so many colors. So if you're interested in a really good paint that has good coverage, you make sure to go out and check out his, I'm going to have his information and his link down in my description box. We let each layer of paint dry really well before we applied the next coat and the third coat we use white linen chalk paint i wanted to go over it with the chalk paint just to give it more of that rustic look and here it is i think it turned out really well i was going to distress it but then after i got it painted i love the way it looked with it fully painted so i'm not going to distress it but it would look good if you wanted to go that route but i am going to add some stencils to it now and i ordered these from amazon but, um, this one is a new one to me this is the first time i'm going to use this one the top of this piano bench needed a big stencil so i went out and i shopped amazon and like i say all my stencils are listed in my store if you're interested in these but
but this one is just perfect. It's the perfect size for this. And so I'm going to go over it with my, my Waverly Black Ink Chalk Paint, and I'm going to do a couple of layers. I've always told you when you stencil, do a light layer on your stencil first, and then go back over it with a second layer. And this helps prevent from, you know, your stencil from bleeding. And look how well this turned out. I think this stencil was perfect for this piano bench. So now I'm going to give you a little bit more inspiration and ideas. So now we're going to put a really cute stencil on the inside. And I'm going to go with that little antique one that you just saw me put on the little brown box. We're going to put that whole stencil on the inside. That way, if you want to raise the lid of the piano bench and kind of display things with the lid up, you know, and just kind of put things in the, you know, um, inside the bench, you can do that. Now I want to take a moment and talk about my sweet friend Liz from the Official Craft Nerd. If y'all have not subscribed to her channel yet, make sure to go over, subscribe, tell her I sent you, send her some love. She is awesome. She does a lot of shabby chic. She does a lot of vintage inspired DIY. She does Dollar Tree hauls. She even has some fun solar flower projects. She does some 50s theme DIYs. She has so much stuff on her channel and she's always doing seasonal decor. So make sure to go over and check her out. Check out her video for today and I will leave all of her information and link to her channel down in my description box. Now this is a Pinterest inspired little pumpkin. I saw this last year and was dying to make it. So this year I'm making it. So all we're going to need for this is we're going to need some scrap wood. And this scrap wood is perfect because it's already aged. I don't have to put any kind of, um, you know, stain or anything on it. It already looks good. So I'm going to go over it with my candle wax. And a lot of people ask me what the green uh, wax is. It's just a Dollar Tree candle and y'all i have been using this candle ever since i've been using this method and this candle has gone a long way this may be the best dollar i've ever spent my life <laughs> so anyway and you can see I, I've, I've found a, a better piece of wood that wasn't as big. Ben was working on a project that day, and he had a scrap bucket. And I went out there, and I was like, I think I like that piece better. So I downsized my size of my wood, but I did the same process. So I just went over it with my plastic scraper. I distressed it, and now I'm going to use some Totally Dazzled Blank just to go with our inspiration. And I just picked out some that I have. And if you're not familiar with Totally Dazzled, I'm going to have a link to their website down below make sure to click on the link go out their website and shop because y'all they have some awesome deals and they always have little monthly specials you won't be disappointed in their products great quality and they come out and work out so good on your diy projects and now i'm just adding that little loop this is just a little flower sack scrap i think that was the hem and that's going to be the stem and i just added a little flower sack bow Now here's another little project that's Pinterest inspired. I thought this was a cute little pumpkin and something else we can make out of scrap wood because y'all I have a ton of scrap wood laying around and you know it's free product but I love also I love working with it. So I'm just taking some of that really pretty Waverly pumpkin uh, it's called pumpkin and it's chalk paint. I just went over my scrap wood, but of course, again, I'm going to use my little plastic scraper. I'm going to put some distressing on it because we wanted this to look, you know, rustic and worn looking. Now, I'm giving you two ideas here. I'm going to make this two sided. I'm showing you a couple of different stencils that I have. This is not like the inspiration, but it's just another idea. You can use, you know, if you've got some more of your shabby chic stencils, you can do that. And you just kind of want to put it down in that little corner and just put part of the stencil on it now this little stencil i found at walmart for 97 cents it's by waverly and i'm going to use it but i'm also showing you some leaves you could also put a leaf down there in that corner you know because everybody has different tastes not everybody likes shabby chic or you know loves that filigree the um, detail so if you like leaves and that's more fall to you you know if you've got some leaf stencils I think a leaf would be really pretty on it so now I've got it I've got a stencil on each side and I'll show you what each one looks like when I go to stage but now for the stem I want to do my stem a little bit different they had a little wood stick and it was really cute but I have this really pretty glass uh, knock, uh, door knocker uh, well I guess it's like a cabinet 
uh, knob and I got it at Hobby Lobby on the day they had it half off so I think I paid two to three dollars for it and I added a bow so just another idea of what you can do to make pumpkin stems okay project number five is going to be a yard sale flip this is a metal wall shelf that i obtained i think i paid one dollar for it now it's pretty but of course you know it's black and my home is more of the neutral colors so i'm gonna i'm gonna transform it so i can put it in my decor and as you can see it retailed for 24.99 so i'm gonna take some waverly white linen chalk paint i'm just gonna go over the whole shelf and i'm gonna give it a couple of coats and then i'm gonna just distress it now i've always told you i don't like to use sandpaper on metal uh, i never have a good outcome with it so um, and I'm not going to use my plastic scraper because I probably could, but I'm going to use a baby wipe on this and baby wipes are amazing. It's one of those items that, you know, you can do so many more things with it than what it was intended for, <laughs> but I just basically got it. I'm just going over those high spots with my little baby wipe. I'm just wiping over it and that gives me just the amount of distressing that I need just to kind of pull out some more of that black that was up, you know, on the base and just, you know, give it more of that just give a little bit more texture and detail now to give you more ideas of how you can use this little metal shelf versus just hanging it on the wall i'm going to go with a repurposed kitchen cabinet i repurposed these kitchen cabinets back in a previous video i did last year and i just basically added a couple of stencils to them after i chalk painted them and y'all seen these kitchen cabinets a lot of times in my staging when um, they're, they're my backdrop so i'm just going to add this little metal shelf to those we just kind of measure drill the holes put in a couple of screws and that way if i want to take the little shelf off I can and it's pretty versatile and I'll show you more of how it looks in my staging now project number six is going to be some some more pumpkins y'all i love making pumpkins and i'm trying to give y'all ideas of things we can do a little bit different because i know we've all transformed those little orange dollar tree pumpkins and don't get me wrong i'll probably do some more of those this year when they when my store gets them because they're so much fun and they're easy to use that little form well i'm going to show you some things that you may already have at home you won't have to go out and buy anything take some scrap fabric this was an old top and a lot of times if you can find tops at the goodwill or at yard sales pick those up because of the colors and the textures are pretty and the patterns you can get them a lot of times really cheap for 50 cents or a dollar that was an old top i saved it because i thought that has beautiful fall colors take a little plastic bag you can even take a walmart bag put some filler in it you have to work just to kind of see and kind of gauge to see how much filler you need and i had to take a little bit out but you're just going to put it in that little plastic bag you know work your fabric around it and see if it's going to be the right size and that'll be our form and once i get it the right size and enough filler in it i'm just going to tie it around in a knot and i'll clip that off now you can also people add rice to the bag and you can also add beans with the filler half and half and that way it gives you a little weight if you want to do that and i may try that in some in some further pro in some future projects too and you just want to gather around the top the best you can you know like i say we're making a pumpkin so you know the best you can make it look like a pumpkin and i'm just going to tie it off at the top really tight with some twine and that'll give it that little rustic look now you can trim down the top if you want to I love that little ruched um, little I don't know I like that top because pumpkins always have like leaves and stuff at the top so I'm going to leave mine like it is now I'm showing you how you can make one out of stained flower sack cloth and y'all know I stain it with leftover coffee and I just let it let it dry and then I'm just going to do the same thing I'm going to make my bag and you can poke a hole in it just to get a little bit of the air out of it and work it down to the size that you need now I used a pizza pan as my pattern to cut out a circle and you can use you know different sizes of pizza pans just depending on how how big you want yours and that was I think that was a Dollar Tree pizza pan that I had used in a DIY project so now again i'm going to take my twine just tie it around and you just want to tie it off really tight and then i'm, I'm going to show y'all some cute ways of how we can embellish these little pumpkins these are so easy to make this is a very fun and easy project and like i say hopefully it won't cost you anything to make these you should have a lot of these supplies already on hand 
Now that we got the little pumpkins made, I'm about to go out on that. <laughs> I'm about to try something that makes me really nervous because I'm going to try to stamp on this, like, you know, rounded object that has filler in it. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it, and if not, I can turn it around. I've got two sides. Now, this is another little stencil set that I have in my Amazon store, and it's, it, it's a whole little page, and I just cut this little stamp off and just cut it out and it's kind of like little script handwriting and you can see i ink down my um my ink pad i put some ink on my stamp and then i just work my stamp over you know the center of my pumpkin and i'm holding it down in place the best i can because you don't want to move it and just work it down so you know your stamp will get imprinted on you know on the whole area of your little pumpkin and there you go y'all it worked so I'm going to take another little stamp, and this is on the same page of that little um, stamp that I got from Amazon. It's got, it's, it's just like a sheet, but it has different little small stamps on it, and I just cut them out. And this one, it'll turn out really cute too. And, um, and like I say, I didn't know how these stamps were going to work on these pumpkins. And you could always stamp your fabric before you make your pumpkin, but I was afraid I wouldn't be able to gauge of where it would you know be in the center of my pumpkin so now i'm just going to show you some different options of pumpkin stamps this to me is the fun part i i love pumpkin stamps and this one i'm just using a little glass um this this was some little cabinet doorknobs um that i got for my when i updated my um my craft room and I had a bunch of those left over, and they make gra great craft projects. And if you ever see the little $1 pumpkins at Dollar Tree that have the really pretty stamps, or even at the Target dollar spot, grab the pumpkin. Even though you don't like the pumpkin, use the stem. Those little decorative pumpkin stems, they're expensive on Amazon, and those are just some, some that I took from other pumpkins. Now I'm taking some little Hobby Lobby tags. You get three on a card, and all of their fall decor right now is 40% off. So I'm going to take this one that says fall, and I'm going to put this on my little gold pumpkin, and I just added a stick for my yard on this one. And like I say, I'm just trying to give you lots of inspiration and ideas of how you can embellish and make it a little easy, inexpensive pumpkins to put all throughout your home for the fall season. Now project number seven, this was a yard sale find last year, and this has been in my shed. <laughs> and like I told y'all, my daughter's getting married in September, and we're thinking about displaying this somehow outside. Maybe hang it from a tree or something. So I'll, let, I'll keep y'all updated on, on the wedding and how all that turns out. And I'll, I'll try to do a video on, on how we decorate her wedding and stuff too, if y'all like to see it. But Ben's outside. He hung it up. And I paid $5 for this. It did come with some light bulbs, but we are going to take the cord out of it. We're not going to use it. It don't look electrically safe. They have spliced the wire on it. So we're, we're just going to not ever even just plug it up. So he spray painted it, and then I did go over it with some chalk paint. Y'all know I have to add chalk paint to everything I do. <laughs> so he gave it a couple of layers of spray paint, and then I went over it with some chalk paint. And now he's removing... Uh, the plug cord and we just put like a little cup holder um, a hook up in our ceiling and we're going to hang it and I think it's going to turn out perfect for the little space that I have in my family room where I needed something this is the perfect addition
Okay, y'all, we are at the end of the video again. Time for me to tell y'all goodbye. So, as always, y'all, appreciate y'all for coming over to my channel and for watching. If you are new to my channel today and coming over from Liz's channel, thank you so much. I want to welcome you, and I hope you enjoyed my video today. And y'all, don't forget to go over and visit my little sweet friend Liz over at the Official Craft Nerd. Make sure to go over and send her some love. Tell her I sent you. Y'all, I'm going to be uploading a video. I'm going to do two this week. So look out for another video coming on Wednesday. And then also I'll have my normal regular Saturday one too. So as always, y'all, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Y'all have a great week.